I have a real sweet treat for you all today. In this video, I'll be analyzing and dissecting video segments from the UPenn Admissions YouTube channel, which has an absolute treasure trove of information. Just because I love you guys so much, I've taken out the excerpts which I believe to be the most helpful and useful. And then we're going to break down exactly what the Penn Admissions Office is trying to tell us. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Kevin Zen, Yale East Asian Studies grad and co-founder of The Elevated School. Now here at Elevated, we really focus on storytelling and critical thinking. This includes creative writing for middle schoolers, persuasive essays for high schoolers, applying to prestigious summer programs, you name it. Of course, we also help with college consulting in general. So if you're looking for advice on resumes, interviews, strategy, transfer applications, applying to graduate school, we got you covered. Visit our website, www.elevateed.school and shoot us a message. We would be honored to be part of your journey. All right, that intro was long enough. The first video we're going to watch from the University of Pennsylvania is called Advice on Activities. Let's dive right in. For starters, there are two main types of activities, things that you choose to do and other responsibilities. The kind of activities that you've chosen to do give an admissions committee a glimpse into what you enjoy, or at least they should. Do you read poetry at open mic nights in your free time? Do you make sets for a theater company or maybe run a really fast mile? Sharing what you choose to do in your free time showcases aspects of your personality and specific skills or talents that you may have. It also tells us how and what you may contribute to our community. Those last four words are the most important. Contribute to our community. Not just your community, but also our, the college's community. One of the very best things you can do in the Why Us, Why Our School supplementary essay is to include a short paragraph where you explain how you improve the lives of others around you using your special talents and skills. After that, that, add two or three more sentences about how you'll continue doing that in your new college community. You'll want to list proper nouns, names of organizations, clubs, academic programs. Really prove that you've done your research and understand precisely how you can contribute. And don't just say, oh, I'll give my knowledge or leadership. Try to get really, really specific, guys. The more interesting, the more unique your contribution is, the better. For instance, if you have a secret talent, like you're really, really good at making brown sugar boba, you could mention how you'll use that to help during fundraising events for the Asian American Cultural Council. Or if you're really great at leading icebreakers after being a camp counselor for a few years, talk about how you'll use that skill to help others bond during the first few weeks of the semester. This concept is so important that some college consulting agencies have an entire portion of their rubric dedicated to contribution to campus. In sum, ask not what your college can do for you, but what you can do for your college. <laughs> All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed that brief clip. Let's hear a bit more about what UPenn Admissions has to say. We also want to know about your other responsibilities, which can be just as important. Some examples of this could include working at a part-time job, caring for a family member on a daily basis, or having a long commute to school. This is a super duper important point, and especially critical for all of my fellow first gen low income students. What you might think is something mundane, like working in your parents' restaurant or taking care of a grandparent, could be the deciding factor when it comes to whether you're admitted, waitlisted, or rejected. I am not even exaggerating. These sorts of jobs and responsibilities are actually one of the best essay topics to write about, particularly for the main Common App essay. In general, college admission officers love hearing about jobs, especially humble ones like working as a waiter, clerk, lifeguard, because it proves engagement with the real world outside of your little academic high school bubble. Even better though would be if you could combine your work experience or personal background with an intellectual interest. So for example, let's say that you guys walk to school each day and it takes you 45 minutes. So to capitalize on that time, you listen to audiobooks, biographies, 
movies about Winston Churchill, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr. Then if you say that it was listening to these biographies which made you want to study political science or history, mwah, you bet that's going to help your chances of getting in. Another example would be applying some dimension of intellectual curiosity while you guys were working a mundane job. So let's say you're a lifeguard, right? But you're studying a unit in AP physics related to buoyancy. Write about how you literally see the Archimedes principle in action. Working at the Miami-Dade College pool constantly reminds me that the magnitude of the buoyant force is equivalent to the weight of the displaced fluid. That's why the kiddos I train float so much better in our Olympic pool as opposed to their bathtub. So to recap, combining curiosity with service is one of the best, most effective ways to get into whatever program you want. Next, be explicit. <clears throat> what I meant was, don't assume we know what your activities actually entail, because even if they seem self-explanatory, they can vary from school to school. Tell us the amount of time you spend in each activity. This helps us understand the depth of your involvement and impact, and include specific responsibilities for each activity. Did you hold a leadership position? What kind of contributions did you make with the positions that you held? For example, look at what band means in these two versions. You could simply tell us you played clarinet, or you could inform us you were the drum major of the marching band responsible for an 80 plus member band and played clarinet for all four years of high school. And also, don't forget to take time to spell out acronyms so that someone who doesn't go to your school can understand what you mean. I definitely want to reiterate that last part about acronyms. This is especially important for international students since American admission officers just aren't as familiar with foreign educational systems and extracurriculars as they are with, well, American educational systems and extracurriculars. I recently made a video about activities lists, so definitely check that out if you have a few more minutes. There, I talk way more about common mistakes I see as well as ways to fix them. I also include a lot of specific examples. Honestly, I'm really proud of that video. So stop watching this one and go watch that one. <laughs> All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm Kevin Zen, Yale grad, teacher, entrepreneur, breakdancer. Thanks for your attention and I'll catch you at the next one. Papa, papa, peace.